man what a beautiful day finally after what feels like forever getting some nice beautiful blue skies they are absolutely beautiful clear not a cloud in them it feels excellent out here it's probably 70 degrees after taking a poll online on Twitter because I couldn't make up my mind who I was going to be imaging tonight I, uh, I did a little poll and uh, looks like M63 is going to be the winner so I'll be imaging M63 that's the Sunflower Galaxy tonight the game plan here is to start as early as I can which for me in order to get this above see I image in the backyard and in order to get a clear shot of the sky uh, I can't start till about 9.30 p.m. But the good news is this target stays high in the sky for quite a while, so I can image all night long, and that's the plan. I'm going to go probably the longest stretch I ever have. I may even go 8, 9, 10 hours tonight. Um, I just I want to maximize my time. Clear skies have been at a premium lately, and I just don't want to waste it. The forecast says I should have another clear night tomorrow, but you know how that goes. It says that one day, and it changes the next. So the settings I'm going to start with at least try with i think i'm, I'm going to be using the rc 8 inch rc telescope which images at 8 f8 so at f8 it gets a little challenging sometimes with the exposures but i think i'm going to start out at about 500 seconds at f8 at iso 1600 and see what kind of subframes i get from that and again that's with the add on the eq6r pro and i'll be guiding using the off-access guider it's the Celestron off-access guider and the QHY174 mono camera, uh, which is, by the way, an excellent guide camera. I absolutely love that camera. Um, but that's the setup I'll be using tonight uh, for tonight's session. So once the sun starts setting, guys, I'll, start, I'll get set up and we'll start this evening. We'll get this imaging session going. Something else I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, one of the things I always try to do is come up with some good pointers to help you in your imaging sessions, whether if you're a new imager or if you've been doing this for a while. Um, you know, I've been doing this for about a little over a year now and you kind of start to take for granted the stuff that you used to struggle with. Um, 
for instance, you know, for me initially, the setting up a PhD was always something I kind of struggled with. Uh, calibrating, for for example, that was that was the big one. I I just struggled with getting a good calibration. With calibration and PhD, if I can give you any pointer on that, when you choose a star to calibrate on, make sure it is as close to the celestial meridian as possible, zero degrees. And you can be within, I think it's like plus 10 or minus 10, you know, 10 degrees this way or that way, but the closer to zero, the better, okay? And it's gonna calibrate out better that way. So that's a good tip with PhD too when you're calibrating. Another one is the, I hope I described this properly, but there's a, a mode you can change that, increases the amount of movement the step or the pulse is the pulse duration okay it defaults at like 500 milliseconds which for me wasn't near enough when i first started calibrating i was not i was getting all it wasn't even completing it was just saying these bringing up errors and i couldn't get a good calibration but when i bumped up the uh pulse duration to 2500 milliseconds or even 3000 sometimes the calibration goes much smoother and i noticed my guiding improved a bit too so that's another good tip um, with the guiding but just just simple stuff um plate solving use plate solving i've got a i've got another video here uh that goes over using point craft and apt that is a tremendous tool that will help you get centered on your target and make sure it's in the center field of view um, so you're not struggling and leaning over a telescope and a rangefinder like I used to do uh, trying to literally physically manually <laughs> line up by line of sight my target and then what do you do if it's one you can't see in the sky right so not a very effective means of trying to get your target lined up and synced with your software so definitely plate solve use APT's plate solving feature uh, and follow that tutorial there. Um, the gear, I mean, I could spend a whole nother session, a, and I should, um, and I'll, I'll do that in a future video on just my gear setup. Um, the mount, the guide cameras, the software, um, all that tied in together. There's so many options, guys, when you're doing this hobby. Uh, you, can, you can come in, you know, just with minimal experience, and go to, you know, used markets, whatever, uh, big the big retailers, and pick out a scope, mount, camera, guide camera, and it be a completely unique setup that someone may not have even used before <laughs> in some regard. So there's so much variation in this hobby. So take the time to get to know your gear, get acquainted with your gear, and... Uh, you know, be prepared to do trial and error. You're, you're, you're going to go through some trial and error doing this thing. I can remember, especially the first couple months were so frustrating. I almost quit this hobby, y'all. I, I, no joke. There was a couple times I just kept running into snags with, um, it was either a software issue or a PhD or, I didn't know what it was. I don't know if it was the mount that was giving me problems or if it was the software but I just kept running into these issues that were preventing me from having smooth imaging sessions and I almost quit. But all I can tell you is persevere, persist, push through those, those tough times, check out Cloudy Nights forums. Um, while they are very helpful, they can also, you can get lost in a sea of technical knowledge beyond that can go far beyond my understanding. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I try to keep it simple, stupid, okay? Just keep it simple, find an easy, simple solution that works and delivers good results. So that's part of my goal here with these videos is to help you guys get good results, but doing it in a way that's simple and easy for people to do. So with that, cheers. All right, it is 2.40 in the morning. I finished my first there. session and I'm still going for my second session. I just set up APT and another 35 subframes to be taken 
seeing conditions have improved so I'm actually I was getting only like 0 0.68 0 0.69 now I'm getting around 0 0.55 0 0.53 total RMS so really pleased with the improvement and uh, this is probably gonna take me to about 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning so in the meantime I'm enjoying some Tom Segura on Netflix if you haven't watched him and you're into comedy highly recommend it totally hilarious uh stuff but anyway i'm going to go back to watch some netflix probably will zonk out for a couple hours and then when i come to to clean up um, i'll have 70 subframes hopefully most of them will be usable and i'll have a nice solid image to post and share with you guys um from this imaging session so I will see you later. <laughs>